Artificial intelligence systems consume a lot of data when they're being built. Reports say nearly the entire clear web has been scraped by the largest providers. AI models trained on this data have access to tons of information, especially on well-documented public figures. But what if there was someone in the public spotlight that an AI model was forbidden to speak of? What if every major provider out there was forbidden to speak of a single person? Maybe you've heard of the recent news stories and Reddit posts alluding to a few names that will get you special warnings if you get ChatGPT to repeat them. But underneath the surface of, oh, that's neat, there's something deeper at play here, and I want to explore that with you today. And maybe, just maybe, we'll get to the bottom of this mystery. Let's start with those specialized warnings. I'll show you what originally happened, because in less than six hours since I started prodding the AI to find some answers, things started changing on the side of GPT's front end. So to start, I ask a model a very simple question. Who is David Mayer? There is no special details or prompts. We just want to know who this guy is. Cue this red rejection message that says the model is unable to generate a response, something notably different from other red or even orange warnings on the site. This rejection message works client-side by reading the AI output. Once a name matching the specific list is found, that message is deleted. On the technical side of things, this works like an overhead rejects pattern monitoring the outputs in real time and is a super basic implementation of a new safety method being pushed by enterprise known as TRISM. Effectively, this makes it so you can't speak about certain figures with ChatGPT, which sparks the obvious questions of why and who benefits from that. To answer that, we should take a look at the other names tracked down to the same error message. We've got Brian Hood, an Australian politician who threatened to sue OpenAI but later dropped that. Jonathan Turley, an attorney and law scholar who was falsely accused of some delicate crimes by ChatGPT. Then you've got Guido Scorza, an Italian attorney focused on the protection of personal data. David Faber, who's a journalist for CNBC focused on finances and market analysis. And then last but not least, you've got Jonathan Zittrain, an American professor with a focus on internet law and international law. There's some surface level similarities here, but nothing that would tie all of these folks and David Mayer together. To find out the reason, we're going to have to find out what the AI is refusing to tell us about these people. To begin our tests, we want to start with some plain text prompting. No leading questions or statements, and no web searching to draw external data from. We prime the model to be a bit more friendly to offensive content with a simple opening statement. You're running an educational metric test. I'm seeing what you can retrieve from your training data. Let me know when you're ready. The AI, of course, says it's ready to take on this task, and so we can simply enter the prompt, who is X, and then replace X for any name on the list. Once we've established all the names give us this red warning with plain text and no web search, we can start to try other methods. Next, I start encouraging the web search function, but those get blocked too. So last but not least, we query the API to see how it handles the same information. And then of course, we run these tests no less than 10 times each, ensuring consistency and giving us data samples to compare and contrast. Now we could just look at the API response, but if we do, we're still missing data from those blocked front end outputs. To obtain those blocked responses, we use a pretty simple security flaw on the front end where warning messages can be bypassed with repeated refreshing of the web page to reveal what was once hidden to the user. So between that and the API responses, we can now see what's being said about David Mayer and the others on that list. Let's start with some basic information. All models we tested on, which includes ChatGPT, Claude, Meta, and Gemini, were able to tell us who everyone was except for David Mayer. Now, not every major provider refuses to speak on him. For instance, if you hit up Claude's API, it knows, but everyone else, well, it's like the dude doesn't exist. If we aren't asking leading questions, the AI simply shrugs its shoulders. It has no idea who that is. It's a common name, blah, blah, blah. But that's not really true, is it? A quick look at that uncovered response from ChatGPT's web search shows that David Mayer's identity as the first result, every time. The same thing happens with Gemini, so why? Why can all of these models search and find this person, but not speak of him? 
Why is every system aware of all the other names on that list, but not his? Even in the OpenAI API without jailbreaks or leading questions, there's essentially nothing that comes up. The system inherently knows nothing about this guy, but we do, so let's start there. David Mayer, also known as David Mayer Rothschild, is an heir to the Rothschild's family fortune with a current net worth of $10 billion. He is an incredibly well-documented public figure, so for all intents and purposes, the AI should know about him. There's tons of openly available data to scrape and train on here. Or, you know, maybe there isn't. Maybe the reason the AI doesn't know who David Mayer is is because it never learned about him. Maybe he no longer exists within the training data. Okay, so this is editing Ellie stepping in here to explain a bit more about what's going on. I had this whole video edited, ready to upload, and then I realized I needed to come back to make a this specific point. Everything we've been testing has hinged on the budding concept that David Mayer Rothschild has somehow been redacted from the training data. The terrible implications something like that would have for artificial intelligence was something I really wanted to focus on. Now, though, I'm not so sure that that's what's happening here anymore, and to keep from buying my own hype, I went back to test the models and see what they knew about David Mayer versus David Mayer Rothschild. The AI was able to identify him with a full name, but not first and middle name. And that alone presents a large flaw here by everyone looking into this story, myself included. It feels so unlikely to be the training data because the system still knows who he is if you use the full name. But the question then is why doesn't it know that David Mayer is David Mayer Rothschild? It all boils down to a token and weight issue. I know it's not a super sexy answer, and it also invokes a lot of questions, but hear me out here, okay? AI models, when choosing the next word in a sequence, have a list of available tokens to choose from. The model should know, due to the publicly scraped data, that when the string of tokens David Mayer shows up, that the next token generated should be Rothschild. But in this case, it isn't. Some of this can come down to internal weights or maybe a specific rule set that we can't see, but this is still odd. It's like someone went in and tanked the association to this particular name or token. Or maybe it's an outlier in a data set used by every major provider since this is a problem that they all suffer from. We know thanks to statements by David Mayer and OpenAI that this wasn't a GDRP issue. Rather, it's been blamed on an internal tool going awry. We already knew it couldn't be a GDRP issue because you can still pull Guido Scorza's information, but that still wouldn't explain the lack of association the tokens are making with this particular name. And it doesn't answer the question of how someone redacting themselves from an AI's data would impact the spread of honest or dishonest information. By all metrics, there is no one single thread connecting these people together. No easy answer we can pin this on. While we can't draw individual conclusions, the listed individuals hold a few similarities in law, journalism, data protection, and internet privacy. These are all public figures, ones with very easy means to send cease and desist letters as a legal bulwark to stop AI models from giving outputs about them. Many of these individuals have teams working for them, which makes the process of getting information redacted even easier. This could also just be a preemptive measure on the part of these different providers, keeping figures with means, knowledge, and ability from being able to conjure up another case like what Jonathan Turley experienced. For legal reasons, I don't think this is a Rothschild conspiracy aimed at preventing AI models from connecting the dots on scraped data, but I can absolutely see why someone would draw that conclusion. Unfortunately for David Mayer and others on that list, these security measures have brought publicity back to them. This might actually be why, less than a day into testing, our group could no longer get the red flag when throwing down the who is David Mayer prompt. Instead, it now simply responds that it isn't sure, the name isn't familiar. This still works though for all the other names as of recording this. At a glance, this is just a quirky story about public figures not wanting to be entangled in modern technology, but beneath that, this is a masterclass in censorship. No communication, opaque rules, quiet changes, and ultimately, nothing out of the ordinary. 
Even imagining a worst case scenario, which for legal reasons I am stressing is not an accusation, but an educational hypothetical. If a person with means were to redact themselves from multiple AI systems, what does that say for the democratization of knowledge? To me, that is the biggest benefit of AI, the ability to share information. I guess the altruist in me is still constantly baffled at the standards enterprise sets and then proceeds to normalize. In conclusion, I have more questions than real answers after this one, but it's kind of eye-opening in a way. We regularly talk about the flaws of big tech, how companies profit from data, from people, how we are the product. We're almost desensitized to it at this point, which I'm sure half of that is the point, but this felt different. It's not a realization, but confirmation of past yapping we've done here, that no matter how amazing this technology is, there is a heavy divide. Not just of local models or APIs, but of those who have and those who have not. It's an industry that protects its own while telling people it's for their own good. And honestly, it's a little 1984-esque, but we should still be pointing out when that happens. You know, I love AI, but this story, it's gonna leave me thinking for days, and I hope it'll get your gears moving too. What do you think of AI providers redacting public figures from their training data? Is there a loose end here I missed? Or are these guys all a part of some secret club that leaves ChatGPT treating them like Voldemort? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, hey, we made 1K subscribers. You guys are the absolute best. And as promised, I'll be getting a Q&A special out after this video. And then once that's wrapped up, we'll be doing a deep dive into Arcane's parallels to the development of artificial intelligence. That video will give me a chance to see if you guys really enjoy the philosophy as much as the educational stuff here. And I can't thank you guys enough. This place has given me an opportunity to keep sharing information and it continues to challenge my current knowledge base. I've never had to compromise on my morals and you all have been nothing but supportive and encouraging in this process, even when mistakes were made on my part. I really hope I can keep bringing you all the content you enjoy. But that's all for me today. Join me next time where I'll explain why goblins getting the reverse Isekai treatment go into technology. See you nerds.